Now in this A-level IB biology video we're going to be talking about how genetic variation is brought about and remember really we're talking about meiosis here because meiosis is a type of cell division responsible for producing gametes which remember are sex cells so we're looking at eggs and sperm. Now crucially we need to create lots of genetic variation within any species including the human population and what is the advantage of that genetic variation? Well, it's all to do with natural selection. It means that when conditions change, some individuals will be better adapted, and it means that some are able to survive and reproduce, and that some can therefore pass on these favourable alleles, so variations of a gene, to offspring. Because remember, if we just use mitosis and produce genetically identical individuals, known as clones, well, if a disease came and wiped out one of those individuals, then it's most likely to wipe out every single individual, and that's because they're all the same. Whereas genetic variation brought about by meiosis means that some individuals are better adapted and therefore more likely to survive. So from a survival point of view, that's why genetic variation is so good. And that explains why we're all different to each other, the exception really being identical twins. But how does this genetic variation occur in meiosis? And that's really what this video is all about. So how is genetic variation brought about? And this occurs during meiosis, which remember from a previous video has lots of different stages. One of these stages is prophase 1, and our first way of creating variation is through the process of crossing over, which is what we'll talk about now. Now during prophase 1, homologous chromosomes pair up and we'll use colours to show you what's going on here and what happens here is that crossing over of genetic material between non-sister chromatids can occur so effectively they swap small portions from one chromosome to another so let's label it parts of non-sister chromatids can be exchanged producing new gene combinations and what is this known as? Well, that's known as recombination. Myra. Now, this is so important because it produces a huge amount of genetic variation, and that's because it's entirely random as to where along the chromosome that the exchange of genetic material occurs. So just to repeat, this process of crossing over that occurs in prophase 1 produces significant genetic variation as it's entirely random where the exchange of genetic material occurs. And so actually what you'll find is that your four haploid daughter cells will all be genetically variable. Now the second source of genetic variation that occurs during meiosis, this is a bit more wordy but it's known as random assortment. And really what that means is that the orientation, so basically which way up the chromosomes are, so the orientation of pairs of homologous chromosomes, and remember a homologous chromosome contains the same genes but potentially a different selection of alleles. So in random assortment, the orientation of pairs of homologous chromosomes is random. And at which point does this occur? Well, it's before separation occurs. And therefore, if we look at which stage of meiosis we're talking about, it's actually in metaphase 1. So just to try and show you what's going on, this is occurring in prophase 1, which remember is when the chromosomes pair up. Now let's label them for ease. So we'll call this one X, this chromosome little x, this chromosome y, and this chromosome little y. And so in terms of what they do at metaphase 1, which is remember when they line up at the equator, you have several scenarios. You could have it arranged so that the chromosomes look like this, big X, small x big Y, small y, or they could orientate themselves the other way around, meaning that you have small x, big x, small y, big y, and as you can tell, there'd be other combinations also. So there would actually be four possible combinations, and you can play about with those yourselves to prove that. In terms of making notes, we'll say that for each pair of chromosomes, there are two potential orientations. This orientation is random, different combinations of alleles are produced. In terms of applying some maths to this then, there's just a little formula you need to know, which is that the number of possible combinations of chromosomes produced by random orientation is 2n.
Now n equals 23 in humans, and remember that's because that's the haploid number of chromosomes, and if you actually plug that into the calculator, you'll therefore see that there's over 8 million potential combinations of chromosomes, which is kind of mind-blowing and actually helps to explain why we are so varied. Now make sure you check out my previous video on the stages of meiosis. This was simply all to do with how genetic variation was brought about.